Uh, hi, uh, YouTubers. It's Anthony Picton from Vitalab, and we're going to be talking today about fertility preservation. And without a doubt, I think a lot of patients have a lack of knowledge about fertility preservation and also fear as to what they're committing to. And I think probably in the back of their mind that fear is driven by the thought that if they start preserving their fertility, they're committing to having kids. And I tell my patients always, when you preserve your fertility, you are preserving reproductive freedom, but you're not committing to having children. Because the choice to use those eggs in the future um, is really a choice which you can choose to exercise or not to exercise. But having those eggs means that you are never in a position where you have to compromise. You never have to compromise on your career. You never have to compromise on your dreams of having a family. And you never have to settle for who's available when you're 40, rather who's right. And so it's really taking control of something which up until now has been quite abstract and women have really been forced into making a choice. And we see this time and time again with women in their late 30s, early 40s who arrive looking to conceive now and are told that because of age that their egg quality and their egg number is no longer sufficient to allow them to, to, to fulfill their, their, their dreams of a family. And so, so the idea of fertility preservation is making a, a proactive step in ensuring that you're never in that position. Um, I suppose one of the first things to address is how, how easy is it? Um, is it difficult? And the answer is no. It's, it takes about 14 days for us to grow eggs and harvest those eggs from your body and those eggs are then frozen. Uh, we are happy and proud to say that our egg survival rate when you go to thaw and use those eggs in the future is about 99% at this stage, um, which is, well, we're pretty proud about that. And uh, so those eggs will be available. They um, do not age while they are in the liquid nitrogen. So they are not becoming genetically abnormal over time. If you preserved eggs in your 20s or early 30s and use them in your 40s, um, your outcome in pregnancy terms would not be related to your current age but the age at which you preserve those eggs and so we circumvent the aging process not only in the egg quality department but also in the egg number department um, and it's also a safeguard against unforeseen uh, let's call them dilemmas in life often patients uh, are offered fertility preservation as an emergency uh, when they've been diagnosed with a cancer which requires them to use chemotherapy which we know can be toxic to the ovary and at the time of diagnosis most patients aren't healthy because they they have a cancer and so we may see a reduced response um, or in the case of men a reduced semen quality at the time of trying to preserve that sperm or those eggs uh, and having sperm or eggs frozen at a time when you are healthy with no diagnosis means that if you were ever to to be diagnosed in the future you would have a healthy sample of sperm or a healthy cohort of eggs um, so there's something it's sort of like an insurance policy i think in terms of sperm preservation um, what we've seen is a growing interest amongst our male patients in terms of putting away sperm for future use, um, not only um, because of a concern of not finding a partner, because we know male aging affects sperm quality a little differently to what female aging affects egg quality, but men that are looking to pursue, for instance, uh, bodybuilding, uh, and they want to look at going on a short course of steroids, we're not suggesting that this is a good medical uh, choice, but certainly they can put away sperm beforehand and know that whatever they're doing to their bodies after that, they've still got reproductive outcomes um, and they don't have to sacrifice what they're getting in the gym in order to have those reproductive outcomes. So we're looking at a, for men it's much easier, it's a simple sperm sample and that sperm is then processed and, and frozen and sperm freezing has been around for a very long time it's as robust as egg freezing and we know that if we've got a good pre-freeze sample uh, we'll be able to use that sperm in the future what's important to know is usually that sperm would be used in an ivf kind of scenario in the future it's not necessarily 
um, going to be suitable in all cases to use uh, in any other way. So, uh, and yeah, I think if you've got any questions and or are considering egg freezing, it's not that daunting, firstly. Uh, secondly, we're available uh, and to discuss this and we're not going to press gang you into any form of therapy. We will give you an honest opinion as to how effective it can be, how many eggs you would need to put away to make a meaningful contribution for the future, depending on what your future uh, plans are in terms of a family number. And we would give you a quote. And then, of course, you go home and if you see value in something like that, you come back to us. So it's really not frightening at all.